finished the MTW show uh, a while ago, and now we are going to be playing some Killer Frequency. So, I'm actually excited about this because uh, I haven't actually played. Oh, so I want to point out, I'm recording this as well because I do understand that the stream is probably going to go dog shit, mainly because my brother is watching stuff, my mom is watching stuff, my nephew is here on his fucking Xbox, so everybody is probably on shit. So just in case this is going to turn out pretty bad, uh, I am recording, I will delete the live stream version and I will upload the like actual version we're doing here, and I will do that. But for now, uh, welcome to Killer Frequency. Um... I'm excited to see how this fucking goes. <laughs> um, now, no, I haven't done a horror game in like forever. Uh, I think the last horror game I did was like. I actually forgot what the last one. But with that said, uh, I think it's time to get the mood right. So with that said. Oh shit, I went too far. Like, come in there. Uh. We are now set. Oh. In other words, we are about to go to absolute hell right now. Uh, I saw a little bit of this gameplay, um, but I like the idea to where technically from my understanding from it uh the story is is that i'm going to be at an actual radio station place moving here. that works um so from my understanding that's a good majority of how it works with that um now that said i don't know exactly how it works works but um i'm excited to see how it works exactly um, again i do apologize that the stream is coming out super bad uh just mainly because again my whole family is doing stuff um I will, I am recording this, so in case it comes out a little bit too bad to where um, I need to do stuff, but then again, I'm going to double check on the, the right stuff, so let me, that real quick. For the right stuff. Okay. Alright, so yeah, uh, like I said, if it's not coming out good, I will just go ahead and upload the recorded version, yeah, that's what you guys will have. Uh, just so then you guys can get a clear picture of what's going on. But with that said, uh, it is now time to play Killer Frequency, a horror game that I have been dying to play. And D-Mob finally paid me for the work that I did at MTW. <laughs> Which I will be honest with you, I feel like I haven't done a lot. Uh, besides like the actual live streaming part of it. Um, the editing stuff I'm going to work on. I have a Coke down here. Not gonna explode. Fuck shit. Okay. All right. Uh, again. Goddamn. It's gonna be hard to get this, but uh, like I said, we're mainly gonna be doing it like this for a while, and uh, I'll probably be doing this even before I go into work tomorrow too, because uh, I do actually want to start doing let's plays again. To like just as a calm day to like get off of like doing um like wrestling content for a while. Oh he's canceling wrestling content. No, that's not that that's not what I just <laughs> By the way, uh let's go ahead and hop in, finally. Oh, I like that. New game. Oh. A move camera. Oh, I don't like this. Oh. Object. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Thing. So, be to throw objects. Oh, no, drop objects. Drop. 
Enhance? Oh, is that how that works? Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't like I don't like that sound, man. I, I generally don't like that sound. Uh, I don't know what that is. My my actual like. Oh, I don't like that, dude. Get the fuck out. Go. I don't like that. I did not like that, dude. I did not like... I, I genuinely did not like that. Oh my... That genuinely scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. That genuinely scared the shit out of me. That's a rat trap. Fucker. Getting a fucking shield. for this okay cool I don't know why I told me to crouch but I already figured that. That's gonna fuck me. That that is generally gonna fuck me. Oh! What? 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 Wait! What the fuck was that? What? What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Whoa! What the fuck are you? I'm stuck. I'm oh shit! Fucking hell, I still fucking jumped. I still motherfucking jumped, god damn it. Son of a whore. That generally scared the shit out of me. <laughs> you, uh, you hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or, I don't know, uh, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats. Maybe. You know, I don't know. legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I, know I don't know about that. Oh god, dude. Yeah, yeah this stream is gonna be bad. Yeah, I'll just upload the video. Or something? <laughs> not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to. Um, should I do stream? Let me see. Uh, gameplay. Thing for copyright. So this, this might get copyright claimed. So heads up on that. Um, because it looks like we're working on an act. Yes. All right, fine. Let's get through this. All righty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with... Dude, what the fuck? <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. God damn it, Debo. I told you I was gonna be doing a thing. Uh. Uh, for 
Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the turntable. I I grabbed a record. Working. This thing is a the turntable. Record box is on the left, and the record player is on the right. Pick a record I... and stick it on the turntable. Then hit play. I'm trying. It's not working. Oh. Oh, that's how. Okay. So left trigger to play shit. I got you. Okay. Great. Now turn it off. All right. Up next, phone line buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. Line one is the leftmost button. In front of you to the left. Should be lit up, Forrest. You wait, you bitch. Alright, that works. Is it what am I doing? Oh, this one. Huh? Alright, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Okay. Yeah. No, right. not really. Great. And button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm. Is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I labeled it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey. <laughs> okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. All right. Seems to be all working. We done? Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Coming in for landing. Local time? Ah, uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's my fun side that gets me in trouble. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, you're live in three, two... 189.16. Okay, I'm a little confused on what's going on here, but I guess... Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to... 189.16 The Scream Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening Guess that scream This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas Here's how it works I'm gonna play you a scream Then you call and Guess that scream We need you to guess why they're screaming did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need to scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so... Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. 
He's I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it. That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip. Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one <laughs> free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. Oh, God, Forrest, that was amazing. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Light enough, Forrest. That's going to be the highlight of my week. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, caller. I guess I could have just... You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on? I think about that. Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Uh huh? Shouldn't you be working? Leslie, I've got to say I'm always happy to have a caller, but uh, shouldn't our 911 operator and police dispatcher be minding the phones? What? Oh, Forrest, you have no idea. Listen, huh? I found a body. I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not gonna be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Leslie, I'll level with you. I find this hard to believe, but I'll hear you out. Yeah. What exactly is going on? Sheriff yeah, tell me now. Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? Why is this going to be on live that thing? That never happened before, so I came to the station and I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Where are the other officers? Anyone else in the, that Can station? Anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, oh, God damn do you it. have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I yeah. Try, but I can't oh. call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go uh -oh. there myself. Let them know what's going on and bring help back with me. Oh, I think we're going to control today. I don't need a sec. But if you leave while there's a murder around the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. Uh, 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 why me? You talk show host Leslie. I talk to idiot people about their idiot ideas. 
I'm not a 911 operator. Why me? You're yeah. the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. Wow. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's got to be another way in. Better break down the door, find another way into the cell. Better break down Any the door? You could break down the door? It's a yeah. holding cell, Forrest. These doors aren't budging for anybody. Find another way into the there cell? another way into the holding cell that you can see? It wouldn't be much of a holding cell if it had a back door. There's find another set of keys. There's set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Mm. Check the officer's desk. Have you looked around the officer's desks? That's the first place I'd check. That was the first place I'd check, too. I couldn't find anything useful, though. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't yeah. see any at a glance, but... I didn't really look up close. One second. Don't oh, leave me. You know. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and. Ugh. Please don't stare at me. Ooh. I... Oh wait, that might be them. I, I, I think I got the cell key. Oh, excuse me. Like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? <laughs> I'm quitting, K-Fam. This is a prank. I think we can handle this. That seemed to go okay. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Leslie was right. Maybe we can handle this 911 business. That's the spirit, Forrest. I think you're right. Though, I have to say, I... Well, I really hope this is the only call like this we get. Same. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office chair. We'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. You mean we're going to be on our own? Just Peggy and me, and no one else, responding to emergency calls. You'll be fine. You and Peggy just work together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Oh, Wait. What? No way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling. Whistling? It can't be. Oh, my God. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? But that mask, and how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead! He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think! Uh... 
Uh, take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... That... I'll just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But... The only thing that made Wait. sense. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Take Matthew's gun. Take Deputy Matthew's gun. Take Deputy. Uh, Deputy maybe Deputy. Deputy. Surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can Can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I. So it's it's damned if you do, he damned if you don't. Fuck. Trying to defend himself. Uh, can you see any of the weapons? Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? Yeah, is there like anything else? Come on. Um, uh, let me oh, check Martinez's belt. Yeah. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? Take the taser. It's gotta be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Meaning. Yeah. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <sighs> yep, there you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? Hey, fucking hell. So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Good luck, Leslie. That's one brave woman. God, I hope she makes it through this. Fuck me. You know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always Damn. say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. True. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We're here. Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. Over. Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Good. Jesus. God damn it. Get, get back. Get away from her. Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Yeah! Take that! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Leslie, are you two okay? Did you get away, or...? Forrest, that taser... Definitely the right call. Oh, that's good. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you, I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. <laughs> Fair point. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get home? Gallows Creek has a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while. Maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. You can't floor it. the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... Oh, I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. That's good. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Alright, try not to crash. We need you back in one piece. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Damn. Damn. 
Dude, that's fucking that's crazy. Familiar. We've got a killer uh. on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was yeah. a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just did. Okay, and what happened to him? What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500, huh? I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. Thirty-five at best? God damn. Yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could Damn. only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah. Damn. Sometimes that's just the way it goes. Really? So Shit. Has it killed me yet? I guess. Yeah. I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? request. I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice? To us? I, I mean, me! 189.16. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Cut your face off! Uh, 
Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Uh, we also want a mega call. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, so cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a wise choice. See you soon, Morris Nash. Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids, and none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. Peggy, what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny. Yeah. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that, that's real. Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. Ah, right. oh, fuck me. Let's do this. We have a call waiting. Thank you, they can fucking wait. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. Yeah. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. I'm sorry, Sandra, but the sheriff is dead. We're trying to get help in from Henderson now. What? Oh, God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the Whistling Man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. Where, Where are, are you now? now? Did you escape to somewhere safe? Oh, I did, baby. I jazz ran all the way to my car and nothing flat. But I dropped my key somewhere along the way. I never locked the door, so I've got a place to hide, but... Moving. Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Oh, I'm not going back out there. I. Oh, stay quiet. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Look, I don't know anything about cars. But I gotta start this engine without. Wait, 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 I don't... Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash. Your friendly neighborhood radio host. Mechanic and... Savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Listen in to this next track from Late Night Lurkers, if you dare. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. 
The offices are out the door and down the hall. I was door through the I got to actually move and shit, so I'm not full on. to be important. And I bought that's in the restroom. So many locked doors, so few keys. useful. Place them on the tray holder. You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. Okay. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this baby? Put a screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. I don't know. I can't fucking see. Um. Driven ignition. Unscrew the steering column. Exactly what you, what you see. Okay. We can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and. and how the fuck can I read it? There's nothing to read. What's the serial number on the steering car? The number is 576 How do I know? This thing doesn't tell me shit. Okay, well now I'm all Cause uh, so how do I because this thing doesn't tell me anything, so I, I legit don't know what to do here. 
Like, I, I legitimately don't know what to do. Strip the blue and red wires and twist them together. Okay, here we go. Blue and red and twist and turn and... Oh! Oh! Oh, oh turn off! That's not what I meant to do. I was trying to, like, see if I can read the thing, but it won't let me read it. So I was like, what the fuck? Oh, well now you're working? What the hell? Okay, so it was glitched. Gotcha. Column, uh, check this. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Let's say... If there was a 4 before 3, no 7 in the number. Or before three. Six anywhere. Five. Zero. Doesn't come. Red and yellow. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. Strip the power. Do not touch the live wire. Strip the purple wire. Brush it. It says brush. Strip the white wire and brush it. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Just, Just keep, keep driving. driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. Okay. Well, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that, that shit fixed itself. We did it, Forrest. We sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. I still can't believe this is happening. Right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? Uh, that's... I can be honest. Come on, be honest. It, it sucks. Do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to find oh, this cool. whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and uh... staff happy. Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Uh, some folks have been okay. Some folks have been okay. You're not terrible. After a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night and that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. 42. Wow, so that was in 42 minutes. Yeah. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest. Yep. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponte <laughs> of Ponte's Pizza. Nice. What about it? Hello, Brian Ponte of Ponte's Hello, Pizza. Brian Ponte of Ponte's Pizza. What have you got to say about what's happening? 
I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you Are you just advertising? <laughs> you just Thank legit you advertising? Thanks for all you did there. I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. <laughs> God damn it. That's really <laughs> You really don't have to, though. I take it. Fuck that. It's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals. We'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, 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 no. Poor choice of words tonight. Yeah, that didn't come out great. Yeah, that didn't come out great. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else off coming on down to Pony's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Pony's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Here we go. Sure. Done. I figured that out by myself. Fuck you. Is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbor. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy the fuck? Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Oh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. When you're ready, shut the music off. Well, this one might be scream with me, Forrest or Smash. Smash. Yeah, Leslie, this is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. Yeah. The office. This guy just broke in downstairs and wait, wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Son of a bitch. Leslie, I am 911. You haven't heard. Leslie left Leslie me in charge. To Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie? Oh, never mind. Just yeah, come on. me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Ted, what happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing?
willing to do an interview for the reporter. I can cite you as an anonymous source. <laughs> we're live, what the fuck, what do you mean? <laughs> I said you was anonymous, yeah, we're live on air, dude. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Oh, yeah, a lot. There's a lot happening tonight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. And now he's back. I don't know what's going on, but he's back. The whistling man is back. Don't be an ass, Nash. Every <laughs> this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security yeah. cameras all around the building. Okay. Watch them on any TV set here. Okay. Set in the boardroom. Can you Mooney, get out of there? Is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Mm. Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Exclusive interview with the killer. Bye, Maurice Time. Maurice Time. That could work. Exactly. Yeah. It's worth a shot. I Fuck it. Let's go. You, you know, the son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Yet. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out. <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension, plus a plan of the entire office floor, all delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. What was that? You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Go, Forrest! The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. This must be it. Hey, did you get the fax? Yes, yeah, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? 
Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Where's Maurice at? Maurice is in... Call extension... Three? Oh, does it look fuck? Okay, uh um, with the or call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. The boardroom? Don't be a horse's ass. Forrest, this is no time for jokes. Where should I call? Where are you? Wait, so are you in the boardroom? Okay, so you're in the boardroom then. Okay, so then not the boardroom. So then if anything, um, The kitchen. Oh. Archives? Archives. We'll do archives. Call the archives. The extension is 01. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? I thought. Go to. Oh, he's going to the archives. Go to. Or the kitchen? To the kitchen. Kitchen? That's just across from the archives. It's going to be tight. Are you sure, Nash? Let me rethink this. Let me rethink this. Damn it, man! Do you want me to be a headline murder? Hurry up! On uh, second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another... Boy, we're wasting time! He's right first. I'm... I can get another number ready, but we probably won't get to change our minds again. Where do you want would... me to call? No, so call the editor's. Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Go to the kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is Shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could. Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta okay. give you credit for that, but I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. Move the furniture out of the way, but not quickly or quietly. I may play dead. Yeah. You lock him in a room. Can you lock him in a room, maybe? You lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough. Right? Boys, I am doing a thing. What the fuck? I told you all this. Say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to 
get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, 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 I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? I'm not time for this, Peggy. Come on, yeah, there's, there's no time for this. Come on, we gotta, we gotta stay focused. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh. Yeah, I see it right here. Let's change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Mm, the TV in there. Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in. And I get my head chopped off. Think of something else. Mm, Maybe radio. We could use a radio. Yeah. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? A sports mm. reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. Is it still in the office? That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It huh. should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Okay. We're gonna save him, Forrest. Heck, if I don't know. Works, we might even save the whole town. Nah, I don't think so. Don't get excited yet. To do before we celebrate. Let's yeah. See how it goes first. What do yeah. you mean? He's not out of there yet. He's still got to find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know. Yep. But we've got a plan for how to do that. And oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello. Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly. Make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Uh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, goddammit. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! You just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait! We're the radio! We can just be quiet until you're ready! Eh, if you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double-checks. Can you confirm that? One eighty nine point sixteen, the scream. Gallows Creek's best and only phone in talk show with me, Force Nash. And me, Peggy. Jesus Christ. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Oh, let's see. So, he's in the secret archives right now. So, if anything, send him to... Call the archives. Call the archives. The extension is 01. I'm in the archives. Keep your head on, man, or he's gonna cut off. Oh, my... I thought. Oh, I thought you were in the secret archive. Sorry. Uh, call the boardroom then. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. 
The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Uh... I mean, if he's, if he's in the actual archives, then the kitchen would be even worse, because when he goes in there, that's just... Oh no, but look at that. The do okay, yeah, so if anything... Okay. Let me have a think again. Okay, call the... the kitchen. The extension is zero two. That could work. The kitchen is far away from the editor's office, but the killer searched it before. Are you sure? Oh my god, I don't know. So the thing is, okay, so he hasn't searched what's it called, so he might waste time in there. Yeah, you know what? Go, call, call the boardroom. Call, call the boardroom. The, boardroom. the extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? Make the call, because I think he would be more like willing to search that area. So if anything, he, he will probably waste a little bit more time in there, buying him time to sneak in there and do what he has to do. Problem is, how the fuck's he gonna get out? I'm sure. make the call. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? Oh, I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, pal. Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio set up in the secret archive. Okay, so it works. Give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. The... Oh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. So, the cubicles will probably be the best option he has, but the problem is it would be far. Um, we would have to, like, do a thing. The cabinets would take him too long. Under the desk, he gets spotted immediately, practically. Um, the cubicles sound like the best option, because he's going to get spotted there. He'll probably be sticking out there. Because then if he's going to have trouble going in and out, he's going to fucking have a terrible time. But with the cubicles, he'll be close to the stairs. So it's a high risk, high reward maneuver. So I think hide among the cubicles is the best option. I think. Hide among the cubicles. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. Got it. We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man! I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive! Come on down, whistling man! Come and get a knuckle sandwich! I think they're, the, I think they're trying to see if, uh... I'm actually curious how you save him. I, I'm genuinely curious how you save him because th this seems hard. Yeah, that's what I figured too. Because he sounds like a fat guy, so that's where I was like, oh fuck.
Um, okay, so that's the case. So, hi, okay, so we know what happens with the... Um... Under the... De I mean... Hi, I guess I'm under the desk. I just feel like he's going to get caught immediately. Hide under the desk. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. But don't say anything. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man! I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive! Come on down, whistling man! Come and get a knuckle sandwich! Is it actually the cabinet? Is it actually the fucking cabinet? There's no fucking way. Really? Okay, I guess it'd be the cabinet. Unless see, this is just one that plain up dies. Uh, if that's the case, I'll just probably just... Yeah, so we're gonna try the cabinet. Um, Hide in your cabinet. Alright. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Alright. Don't say anything. Until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. This is actually pretty cool. I actually really like this. Alright, so don't say anything. Because that's that's the whole point of that box. It's supposed to make you uh I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man! I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive! Come on down, whistling man! Come and get a knuckle sandwich! Oh, is it actually the cabinet? Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in, We just locked up the whistling man. Forrest, you beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually worked! Uh, I felt like the cabinet was just a. Uh... Frankly, neither can I. I can't believe it either. Thank God it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I'd feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. Let's see what tomorrow brings. I'll take that as a yes. Talk to you soon. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song Game Over ADX. Looks like the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. No, I guess it's not. We got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. Yeah. Hi, what do you want to know? Yeah, I like being a mystery. That maybe I like being a mystery. Too bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? Come on, Peggy. That's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. Oh, 
What was I? Why? Did you do it? I'm sorry, why? Did you do it? Of course not. I only... I'm just messing with you. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh, what happened there? Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's KFAM regulations. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. Getting in there tonight. A tape play on air. Oh, you just put. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah, it's cool. I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to... Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Time to... Time to... I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I... Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Hmm. I mean, that much time has passed. Hey, we had a call come in. Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with... Ash! 
Shut up and listen to me. Mr. Russell, what's wrong? Are you oh, okay? Oh shit, what's I going on? Listen. He's gone. The whistling man is gone. What? He's gone. God damn it, I thought you locked him up. What's going on? Damned if I know, Nash. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? Well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies. We came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. Door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. They thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Okay. I don't blame you. I would have been tempted to do the same. Have you both got a screw loose? You know I what mean... the whistling man's done tonight. This yeah, but yeah. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and yeah, then then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. None. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? Oh, there's no way. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing out a dodge. And I recommend you and everyone listening do the same. Well, they're not going to. Really spooked. Wouldn't oh. you be if you got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to like, be a fuck. demonic spirit? Oh. He's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? Oh, there it is. Again, I do apologize for this. I will delete it and... Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. You stopped the show for a tape? Just go get it. Are you a big fan of Roddy? I love Roddy. I will always find you was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. 
Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fan, not to me. Then it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Man, I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at K-Fan aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Yes. I have a feeling I'm about to die. There's the affordable apartments that are perfect for you. Property two, three bedroom. There's a fully. No. I need a key to get in there. Fish, they said. I don't know how to say this, but I think we. Friends, though. Oh, that's. Exceptions. I don't see. Oh, there you are. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. I don't know, this thing seems interesting, so I'm going to take it with me. Did you get it? Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, yeah. is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. <laughs> that's all that part was, just me getting a fucking wreck. I think that's every time I've seen him live. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream, and tonight's 911 stand-in. Yeah. Is Murphy. <laughs> Murphy. Murphy. Uh, what did you do for us tonight? Thanks, Forrest. Good night. Happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Oh. Cool. He's free today, and man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live. How to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? <laughs> oh no, I just realized. <laughs> Disposal plan. Guess what? 
Oh boy, here we go. Oh boy, here we go. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. Oh God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Seven nuts. of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. The discipline of the tarantula. The speed of the tuna. The poise of the scorpion. And the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30 minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, <laughs> additional VHS tapes, the tornado technique, and karate love making. Call today! Do... People really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I might watch them, I guess. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just... Get to the <laughs> wow, what a deal. Only twenty four ninety nine, And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. Just ask Murphy. But unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, For Forrest Nash. <laughs> You're here live with me. Hello? Oh. Who is this? Hey, do you need help? Okay. Do you need help? Forrest? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them, or? We sure did. You're in safe hands. Okay. Okay. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, Collar? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just... Calm down. Tell Don't me worry. where you are right now. What's yeah. your address? I'm, I'm, oh God. Maybe Can you hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know, but... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Don't oh, worry. Boy. We'll figure it out. Figure it out. I yeah. Do this. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. 
while we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. You're gonna love this next track. Peggy, what places do takeout in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. All right. They're calling. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was oh, a lot yeah. of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. You know, I hate this town. <laughs> things like this that make me hate this town. Complain after you save her, Forrest. Get I do. Suggestions on where to look. Check the offices for anything food related, and maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... Uh... <sighs> I just have to look around. Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. What was that? Get the living fuck out of me, dicks. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallows High performed. Three multiple? I don't know if I need more or not.
Nice. New music to play. Hmm. I'm looking for collectibles now, honestly. <laughs> this is the only one I see. Anything useful? Remind me what I'm looking for again. The frat house by Virginia has been ordering takeout all night. We've got to figure out who they've been ordering from, then place an order for the frat house with a note to call the station. Okay, but how do I figure out who they called? We need to think like frat boys, Forrest. What would you order if you were a frat boy? Mmm, cheap food and cheap beer. Exactly. Use your frat boy instincts to guide you. Check Brad's desk in the office. He's our food critic, so his desk is your best bet for food-related info. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. See what you find. Cabra. Hmm. So I got two things. I got Shalupa Cabra performing review. Cabra. Okay. That's like. I don't expect. 
No deals to Find anything useful? I mean, I feel like that's it. Remind me what I'm looking for again. The frat house by Virginia has been ordering takeout all night. We've got to figure out who they've been ordering from, then place an order for the frat house with a note to call the station. Okay, okay. but how do I figure out who they called? We need to think like frat boys, Forrest. What would you order if you were a frat boy? Mmm, cheap food and cheap beer. Exactly. Use hmm. your frat boy instincts to guide you. Check Brad's desk in the office. He's our food critic, so his desk is your best bet for food-related info. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. See what you find. Wasn't there three places they mentioned, though? Checking. A promotion, huh? There he goes, that's three play. Hey, find anything useful? That should be it. Yeah, I'm ready. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest. What'll it be? Get up. Go, please. Uh, see, grilling spree, I don't think that'd be a thing. I feel like they do it. All Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take an order? <laughs> Fat man calling, dead. Fat man calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? I need some garlic bread. I need the bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. This is I'm Coming to Get You by Vice. One of the best tunes this year. Yeah, but I was trying to set the thing down. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? 
No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. Uh, equally, equally awful? awful? No, equally good. But if I had to order, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right, so between grilling spree and chalupa cobbers. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can the change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! This is Brad Van Plunker! We got some call. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a goose prank. Play into it. Sure. Whatever, it's Goose. Now, listen, I... Goose, dude, get your ass to the party. We got so much beer! Listen, I need you to... Goose, come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. How can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control it. So, play us the flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, radio man. Got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Stream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Please. Oh, my God. It's, it's you, is God, I didn't talk, I promise. Whoa! The party has arrived! Oh, thank God. He's gone and... Oh! Oh, is that you, Radio Man? Don't worry, we brought the beer. Good times are here. I could use a drink. Thank you, Forrest. You're welcome, hey. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes. Some wear sheets as togas. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? Yeah, that was a little weird. There's a janitor here at the station named Clive. But your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, so far, like we have another pretty good. Hello, caller. You're live. I've uh, on the screen with, with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town. Terrible. I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yeah. Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotions. But uh, since you ask, it's Ponty's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! 
Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! Oh, I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just. Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. Host of 189.16. Not it. The, the Scream. scream. And it's a night. 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, are. Yes. Caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special Ew. lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight, to take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. <coughs> go home to your parents. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My Big time. parents are dead, actually. But, oh. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on. I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life, not the worst. You know the way out? Do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! I- Listen, Eugene, breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I- I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry. Oh, fucking hell. Well, Listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. It's funky, it's groovy, it's Stab in the Twilight by Knife and Easy. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone have the maze dates in the maze maze? Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, huh. there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then, if she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Right, I got Let's it. see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. Help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception, never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. I already Ready got balance? the thing. Right. Yeah. In other words, Sorry, I, I thought ahead of time. Sorry. No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? But never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. 
There are hay bales painted gold on my right. I need him to go with hay bales on his right. So then would that be... Golden Hay is on his right. So then he needs to go left. Go left. Oh fuck, I think I told him to go the wrong way. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so he... I need him to go... There's a big statue in front. Wrapped in horn. Left. Go backwards. Go backwards. Oh, God. Why didn't I just fight her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Go. Got you up ahead. So he's gonna have to go left. Go left. Oh, this wasn't how tonight was meant to go. I just wanted some love. Oh. Uh, there's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. Okay, so there's a any more in front of him. Any more is it? Air crow behind him. Okay, he needs to go right. Go right. Just past the corn stuff. Thing is, I don't know if he went right. Okay, so if he went, if he goes forward, he should be fine. Wait, no, because then he'll go down. So we just passed it. He has to go right. Yeah, he has to go right. Because he's right. He just passed it, so he's right there. I got it. And my bike's still here. Oh, oh dude, that was. Thank you, Forrest. I, I love you, Molly. That 
was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Ah, yeah, fuck. Now we got time. Our four man, he, he's been moving that much shit. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Uh, yeah. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Yeah. Wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Well, Thank you. That's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, Why? I... Uh, I threw it out the window earlier today. Why? And why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Oh, Not my fuck final you. Tower, but I can only take so much. Ah, f for shame, Peggy, for shame. What do we do then? So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks. Here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Don. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Here comes one of my favorites. Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote yeah. that song for one. It gets <laughs> real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. Oh, uh, maybe we just I guess. Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest. Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Oh, God. What's wrong? Me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? Uh, that's not important right now. Just tell me what happened. Yeah. Gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. Uh -huh. I got a flashlight, but oh, oh, goddamn! I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now, or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just come on. Go the gal is waste the disposal. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal <laughs> Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? What? Are you fucking serious? God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They oh, son of a bitch. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? 
My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street, and Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane, but he's old, really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Is it wait? Dallas Creek no disclosures. East side McCurdy Street will be closed from second to ninth. Residents residents unable access. Uh, hold on. I need. I need to. All right, Forrest. Who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Where is Murphy again? Forrest, really? He just told yes. us he's at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I forgot. Well, tell me where the fuck the friends are. What the fuck? All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? I, I, tell me what the, oh, fucking hell. I didn't hear what the fuck she said. I, I generally didn't hear it. Like, I, I don't know what the fuck she said. Wait, so... Uh, uh, is this thing now doing a thing? Because I don't know where exactly where they're at. Fuck it. We're just doing a thing. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Save game. I'm doing that. I'm using one save files so that... That shit pissed me off. Fuck did that shit go? Otherwise we get... Ah, oh, God. Fuck it, we're guessing. Right, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Middle one. Call Alex. Call Alex. All right, give me a second. Sling. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. First, I'm getting a call. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away, too slow. The plant burned down. It collapsed. Okay. Oh. So Murphy. So it's either the top one or the other one. Okay. Yeah, because they she doesn't Oh there it is, son of a bit okay. So Alex lives on the corner of Haddon Road. Okay, residents will be unable to access the connected Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield. There's Haddonfield? So Alex lives in the corner of Meryl Street. Catherine lives at the rest end of Myers Lane. That'd be pretty. Old Man Jericho lives at the east end. Good technically. I'm a And that would be no So call Jericho then. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Jericho. All right, give me a second. Break the walls down! <laughs> yeah, if I knew they were right fucking there. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope All right, cool. Time. This killer will not have one fucking kill. Well, he has one already, but... Sure, yeah, what's up? Yeah, let's go. Answer. Are you sure you can't? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? What's happening, Peggy? Uh, 
old man Jericho wasn't fast enough. He was the closest one. What do you mean? Well, he's an old man, I guess. But can the other one even make it? Because Alex wasn't going to be able to get there because of McCurdy Street. Catherine lives at West End of Myers Lane. That'd be like right here, isn't it? Yeah, Myers Lane. So she's here or right here. Oh, uh, well, she could have just gone there and then ooh, that or... I guess. Pretty strange. Catherine, then. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? I got a sec. Okay, there we go. Call okay. Catherine. All right, give me a second. <laughs> They're on the way. Okay. They'll okay, call cool. from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they're right, cool. time. They won't. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. Oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink. See? Second one, Kyle. Could... Murphy, see anything? Do you see anything at all? Yeah. I got a little flashlight. Looks like old cans, bottles, and newspaper. Okay. What does it say on the newspaper? The Henderson headline. What was that? My reception is terrible in here. Please, Forrest, tell me where to go. Fuck okay. it. Um, because I have no idea where to go from this. Cycle. There's a legend on this. I don't know what that means. Get out my hands. Uh, I really don't know because I don't know what these mean. Um, because I mean I can try getting the train station, but I don't know what these symbols mean. There's no legend for me to look at, so I generally don't know. What's challenging hunt going for? Whether you are here from? I mean, where do I go? Okay. Um. Recycling, personal storage. I have no Murphy, tell me what you can smell. What do you think, genius? I told you earlier. Fire! I smell fire! This isn't helping? I don't know what to tell them. That's the thing. 
Like, I, I, there is nothing here telling me shit. That's why I don't know what to tell them, because there's, like, really nothing for me to tell them. Like, there's these symbols here, but I don't know what the fuck that means. Because all that just tells me is that that's that. But I don't know what the hell these things are. So that's train tracks. Cycling to get him to the ravine. I genuinely don't fucking know. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see, if I think about it. Waste disposal, that's going to be something to kill them. Personal storage, I don't know what that means. I mean, you think of recycling or personal storage? Go, Go recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. The plants went up again. I can go shredding or crushing. Which way? Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man. What do you want from me? Oh wait, am I real? Oh, 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 this is too super cool. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, hold on. Rewind that. <laughs> Rewind that. I fucked up. I didn't understand. I thought they were like full on together and I was leading them both out of the building. Okay. So go to waste disposal. Since. Go to waste disposal. Okay, so I was wrong. So, okay, cool. Okay, it was the other one. <laughs> so I was right. I just didn't know. Um, so it is recycling. Okay, so then yeah, I got to go to go to recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. This is the only one that she actually made it. Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man! What do you want from me? Uh, you hear anything, hear Murphy? anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my chest! Put the receiver up to the lid. Turn it up! That sounds like a crusher. Catherine, go to the crusher. be Henderson because I think he said the paper said Henderson open the Henderson container the lock is <gasps> I found him ah I remember let's hold us it's coming down oh shit They actually do it. <laughs> we made it. Oh, nice. Oh, man. You saved my life. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I swear to you, now, I'm going to raise Fernando to be like you. I'm getting my money back from Mr. Robin. Hey, you just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Fernando. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Is it what's her name? Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just yeah. want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors. 
during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallus. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. Teddy, this isn't the time for your political ads. Stop. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his just, soul, just with fucking, over two just, just tank, Teddy, just... unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? Emergency nut problem. Whistling man, your family waste plant burned. Your family waste plant just burned down? So now we have nowhere to dump our garbage? The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here Fucking. we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable. Oh my fucking god. You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town. It Your producer sounds a little unstable too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of and that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Time to play a commercial. Hey, hey, hey. great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh, no. We got a beer. What am I going to do? The party is going to be over. Fear not. A grilling spree will give you a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six pack of beer if Gallus High wins. A free six pack? Righteous. You heard me. Six beers if Gallus High wins. He has a Sounds dick, like though, to be like beers. trying to do that. I hope we murder them. <laughs> Do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs! Ugh, it just get me back on the air. And we're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. Caller on line one. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. With Forrest Nash. <laughs> oh, fuck. Here's another one. Uh, hello. Caller. Who okay. Is this? I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing. Forrest Nash. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Oh shit. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it! She's just a kid. Where are you? Are are you somewhere safe? Oh my god! Oh my god! Stay with me, kid. Focus. <laughs> Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? <laughs> 
sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? <sighs> Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? I have no idea. Go to, to the, the bedroom. bedroom. Ah, fuck. Okay, I'll... Ah, uh, because I should have saved. Because <laughs> I do want to try saving them. I want to go for like a full save run. You fucked up, asshole. I know, but still. I, I, I don't know. I was already doing so good. On the stream with me, Forrest. Nash. I like the style of this game, though. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, Although it's worth Colin. what I. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I... I'm Forrest Nash. What's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I. I think he's killed some of them already. That's him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. <laughs> Where, Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. Um, there's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Yeah. Uh, go to the... Bedroom, we have a lot of hiding spots, but at the same time, I feel like she get fucked. Go to the closet. She, I mean, that's typical fucking horror movie shit. Bathroom, not really. I would say go to the bedroom. There's a lot of hiding opportunity. Go there. to the bedroom. Okay, I'll. He's dead. Fucking dead. horrifying by the way this is like oh my god you're just listening to a murder it's so fucking crazy okay so the bedroom didn't work go to the bathroom eh, i guess go to the closet then okay i'll is that one of the bathroom just sounds like a terrible idea all honest I think what I'm thinking is, um, oh, no. yeah, yeah. is the bathroom then? We'll try the bathroom. I'll tell her not to move again. And if not, that means that she has to run. Okay, so yeah, it's him running. 
It, it, it's all what? the same. I don't think we can... Run! Run! Oh shit, wait, did they actually not live? They actually not live? There's no fucking way. Go to the bedroom. The bedroom. Okay, I'll... He's here. He's here. He's gonna kill me. Boris, I don't think we can... Don't say shit. Okay, okay, so yeah, don't say shit, because that was gonna... Pretending to be the whistling man. Oh, well, this son of a whore. I'm out of here. Go Jimmy. home, Jimmy. Everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please, go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> no way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! Everyone, get inside! Oh, oh. shit. You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house, and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. Fucking... Oh, fucking horse. A fucking course, Jimmy would have the fucking keys. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay, Carrie. Okay, okay, it's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just gotta keep calm. Right. Just keep we'll calm. Something out. Between yeah. all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just. Oh, son of a whore, okay. man. Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern, Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good at... And... No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh... We're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. 
A These bitch. damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. We do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> It's David Scopo with Moonlight. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not okay. sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere down there. I know where she's at. 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 I know where Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Hey, Chance, is there more, uh, more record? Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. This might work. Is it possible that Genie could be the Let's see if I can find more record. What the hell are you doing? Look, man, I want to see if I can find more records. Trying to see if there's any. So many locked doors, so few keys.
You're wasting time. Just go fucking do the game. I know, but I... You're fucking wasting time. I know I am. You're wasting all the time. I fucking know, brain. Shut the fuck up. I see there's any more. What's the point of the jewel? I'm really checking this. No, it doesn't look like I'm gonna hate the ending of this because I have a feeling uh, it's gonna be like me and him going one-on-one -on -one with each other and he's gonna try coming after me Find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. Most likely to win an award for Purple Poker Face. Most likely to end up in prison. Most likely to escape prison. Most likely to become an. When you're ready, shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Who needs to climb to the roof? Become an Olympic athlete. I feel like an Olympic athlete would be not David more likely. The option again. Heather, Kyle, hot David. And it would be. Oh, they did tallies to it. Okay, got you. So it's either David or. Okay, look at that. Wait, climb? Oh, it might be Mount Everest. Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Now, please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two. The whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Seth. Seth. Seth, what are you talking about? I don't know that smashing into windows is really... Fine. Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so it'll probably be easier that way. Then is part four. That was impressive. Very detailed plan. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, 
But honestly, it's yeah. It's easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Second. Hot David. This one. Hot David. <laughs> yeah, you are. You spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part five. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable lead? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Most likely to win the award for worst poker face. The worst poker face would be certainly Tammy. Right? The deal. It's not even on. Tammy would. Oh, wait, wouldn't it be Lisa then? Yeah, because Lisa's not even on the thing. Because I feel like if anybody's on that list, it would be bad. So, if anything, maybe Lisa on that one? Yeah, we'll go Lisa on that one. She might die, but oh well. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. God oh, damn. Someone who could drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, Oh. Whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Whoever is most likely to get the hell in this case. To escape. I guess technically it would have to be Cynthia for this one, because Cynthia would be the getaway. Cynthia! I know we all love watching American Skid. Yes, I... Yeah. Just do what they did in the movie. Uh... Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope, hope so. Right. Yeah, let's hope. Fuck. Hope I chose it. Yeah, because that one, that, that seems like there's going to be, like, death involved oh, in general. Oh, you're back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. All right. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go. Keys, Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face yeah. is lying next to him, Forrest. He got God. Oh, God. Focus, focus. focus. Breathe. Right. Right. The van keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Focus, focus, focus. Got him. And Hot David should be back any second. Lockpicker's still working. Oh my god! 
Oh, fuck. Oh. I guess we chose wrong. Because I would think, like, the most to, like, do the most lock picking would be that. Um. Okay, so go to the bathroom. Okay. Is there a way to, like, skip this stuff? Damn, so we gotta we gotta relive all this shit. I'm sorry, y'all. Forrest, I don't think we can Run What are you doing? I'm fucking it. <laughs> Fuck you. It's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Fuck it. You're sick, Jimmy. Jimmy, this is a pretty sick thing to do. What? It's whistling night. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you? Is that idiot? Seth is right next to you. That's uh uh wait. Oh no. Who uh who are you? Oh no, I'm dead! Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to. Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house and. Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. <gasps> <laughs> oh shit. Uh focus. focus. Stay focused, Carrie. Focus. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'm here. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. Jeannie? I wish there was a way to like. Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Force, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh. What? Scott, you're not any good at. And. No, no, Chad. Everything okay? No. We, uh, uh, we're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do, but I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker, or else these idiots are going to get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. 
damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh, they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. He really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. <laughs> Fucking miss. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Jeez, Ooh. they really tucked Jeannie away. Friendship quiz. This might work. Sorry, it's just weird. Normally when there's something like that, um... Find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one. Whenever you're ready. When you're ready, shut the music off. This is Forrest Nash back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Oh, if I remember correctly, we chose Heather on this one. That was... Heather? Stain. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Who did I choose? I chose Seth. Who did I choose? Yeah, I think I chose Seth for that one. Yeah, had to escape prison, so it should have been Jennifer on this one, so that's my bad. Jennifer. Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... 
It'll probably be easier. A set looks like the. Then is part four. This That's is a, a very detailed plan. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, it's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four. We need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. I believe we went hot David because I think hot David and good. Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. <laughs> the getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So... Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Technically, I think Lisa, only because she's not in that category at all. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care <clears throat> of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally. Part six, we need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Technically, I'm going to go from least to worst, so technically Scott would be a better one, I assume. How do you turn it over? Oh good, like at least it did actually. Okay. Like Scott. It was like your trip while running in a horror movie? Oh shit. Okay, don't pick Scott. <laughs> He's gonna kill them. Um Cynthia's also in there. That will be Chad then. Yeah, go be Chad. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. Oh shit, well if I knew this was a thing. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. All right. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter! To the roof! Go, Heather! She's off and away! All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go! 89.16. The screen! Wait! Lockpicker, go! We'll get the keys on the <gasps> Oh, Jimmy. Oh. Oh, he's. His face is. The keys. 
secretary, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got caught. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Right. Yeah. Right. The van keys. Got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. And hot David should be back any second. Perfect. It's working. I can't believe it's actually working. You're doing great. Focus. You got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Let me go. Let go. Just drive. Oh, my God. Okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. Ah, oh, damn. That scared the shit out of me. It was all you. It was really all you, Carrie. Still, I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was, a, that was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Damn, dude, that one. Hey, That's what's the teens. Damn, dude, that was fucking crazy. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, what's Nash? Call her live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say. That you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. 
As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky. And I now consider you a friend, my man. Huh. Uh. We're friends thanks, friend. Now, huh? Wow. That's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, hello, Max. Oh, welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Maxie sounds like a really special boy. Uh, Maxie yeah. appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxi. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. You'll like this next song. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah. yeah. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Uh, I saw you. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey! Yay! I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so <laughs> brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did, why let me go? He was a victim. He won the pranksters. Got bored. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I. Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did. Why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? 
Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. Damn. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, pretty it's much, yeah. To consider. It is something to consider. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. All right. Oh, I'll keep your music stopped. Fucking just guess. <laughs> Look, man, it'd be nice to f play some other music, okay? I was hoping that this was like, this light was the fucking uh, tiger one, you know? I found that one. These are all ones we have. The only one we don't got is Cage Tiger. All right, I guess we can just head back. Like I said, I was really just trying to find that other song, but it might be in a spot that we might be. It is actually a pretty cool game, though. I actually really enjoy it. Like, I'm really liking it. Far more than I expected. Um, with that said, we might do one last, like, save a life, and then I'll probably call it after that. going Peggy alrighty we could run another segment or scratch that for us we have a caller you're through to 189.16 the scream what's your emergency hello again Forrest oh, that call with the teens was awful those poor kids still I'm I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were gonna play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Oh, wait a minute. How do you know that? We were off air when she said that. How does she know that? But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. But 
Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Uh, Don, it's fast. I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will, Forrest. Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. Oh, I don't fucking like that shit. Here's some music for you while I think things over. Fuck. That's going to be my shit, the final breath. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Breath. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about- I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... Fuck me! Uh, all right. I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the board down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, the screen. With me, Peggy. Fuck. Fucking serious. I gotta deal with this fucking bullshit. Son of a. Let me. Fucking saving right here. God damn it. Son of a. Oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, I generally don't want to do this. I, I felt comfy just being in the fucking what's it called, man. Bitch, dude. Peggy, why the fuck did you have to throw that stupid thing outside? You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Hello. He's fucking here. He's fucking here. Here it is. Long ride home. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course, the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. <sighs> Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. Fuck, dude, I don't like the sounds. Oh, great, I'm gonna come out here again later.
not really any way for me to jump. I genuinely don't know what to do here. Yeah, like not like a hundred percent, not even joking with you. I generally don't know what. To do. And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. See if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. I should check the fuse box. All right. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Bingo! I could probably survive that fall. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? There's a key. I'll just take that. Might be important. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Fuck okay, hmm. I wonder how the show's going. It seems like I'm safe here, so I'm gonna try some. Let's try and see if I can. Try to see if I can find. Act. Lock. For now. I don't like this because now I feel like we just open. I 
I literally don't like this. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, the fire door lock. You're 40. God damn, God damn, all this happened in the span of just an hour? Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And yeah. you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Science club. Oh, I just heaved the entire board up. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So Gavel's Creek Harvest Festival earlier this year after tragedy struck hours up. The big wheel broke free. Supports and rolled through down. The investigation is currently underway. More on page twelve. Uh, local doctor K. Rowling, but events all locals. No difference. Myself, 1969 has been a great years so far. Stuff, sir. Power station hires 20 new staff. Hire 12. Don't know what any of this is telling me. What the fuck's today? Criminal operation shut down, 34 arrested. Has to remain anonymous. Have to be referred to. Has walked free. What is doing? Brody, a former Gallows High School Captain Chuck Brody suffered a victim of the fact late last year. To help him on this road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and gets back the pun not intended. Drop tickets in the local legend takes to Manhattan this off Sell all books. Diary of a car thief moves out to get life. City stole our car and then she pirated. And he left. But what does any of this have to do? I don't understand. Oh, so are these all just their stuff? Like this aisle, or? Oh. Okay. That's helped. Oh, I tried just organizing that shit a little bit. Okay, 
walker. Okay. Fine. They rod him. E. Williams on that thing. Cody Walker Allen. Rebecca Allen? Investigation into the festival that were on. Uh, local legend takes to Manhattan of Jim Randy. The fuck does that have to do with it? Support the review. That's nice. We have Matthews as this behavior ever more. Oh, So, think of being a local celebrity, people. The festival disaster happened because of. Yeah. Yes. So. Into the long running thieves crime syndicate. You know. That could be. Yeah, so that's. Give out your health and safety to come on down to yearly. He's already gone. 
It might be the hospital, because... Tim Walker is a hospital. Where's my problem? Gas station. Technically. Couldn't be the This would be the trailer park, but the trailer park is Walker up Car Club. Oh, yeah, no, Car Club, yeah. That's where she's. It seems like the hospital's the thing, though. Yeah, because this thing seems like a... ...bashed into a kill tanker. What happened there? I want to say it's the hospital. How's it going? Uh, uh it's not going well. I could use some help. Yeah, I just okay. want to figure out. Okay. Let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four yes. locations, right? And four people. We need to yeah. figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? Oh, well, the fucking calendar is right here, too. So it's September 1987, the third. So it might be Kim Walker. The only thing that's of this year. Yeah, so it should be Kim Walker. Uh, yes, please. Sure. I think you should be methodical with this. Try grouping the notes by who they're about. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. How's it going? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Peggy? Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Fair point. Why are you going so late with us? Mainly because I, I don't really got a lot of sleep. Look, man. Look. I don't get a lot of time to play. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Kim Walker. Kim Walker. And where will I find them? Likely at the hospital. The hospital. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Forrest, I'm through to the hospital, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. What? Then who? Ah! Jeez! 
It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now? Oh my god. The call board. It... I... One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me... I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. <sighs> okay, so it was done that. So, load. So... Very awful. What is this? Engineer responsible for the Gallows Creek. Spot. Aunt Williams, then? Oh, so then it would be the power station at Williams. Okay, at Williams power station. Okay, let's I'm do sure. this. Let's do this. Okay, name first. Who do you think the target is? Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? If there was an explosion. It had to be the power station. Power station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Uh, this one's different. It's an actual like call and everything. Forrest, I'm through to the power plant, but they say there isn't anyone by that name. Oh, bitch. Okay. There. Only thing that's today. It's not Ant. Should have been Ant. Because he was involved in that whole sh huh? The hospital saying health and safety. I had read. Fox the health and I don't know. I want to say it's, it has to be Aunt Williams. This is the only thing on here that is of today's time period. February 11th. This is the only one that's of like time period. The third today. That why does it not? They say you learn from your mistakes. Well, I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay, name first. Who do you think the target is? Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? Literally don't fucking know the fucking problem. The hot fuck it. Try the hospital with the hospital. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Doesn't make sense, but it works. It works, I guess.
This is the only one with this time. I'm through to the hospital, but they say there isn't anyone by that name. Okay, okay. I do like the loading. Um, fuck them. Who the hell would it be? I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? It has to be. And where will I find them? Oh, I already tried the power station. <laughs> sense. The gas station. Why would okay, it be I'm the done. gas station? Does it make any sense? It genuinely doesn't make any damn sense. Oh, Aunt Williams. Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Who is this? Why are you calling up and asking for... Who is this? Just do it. You need to get everyone out now. Just do it. It's you, isn't it? I always knew one day you would... And the one year I finally put it behind me. What are you talking about? For God's sake, you have to get out. Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up. He's you. Uh, I'm just curious. Okay, so we know what it is. I'm just curious if I said four snatch, if he would get out like sooner. Um. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, name first. Who do you think the target is? Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? Well, why is he at the gas station? Okay, I'm dialing. That's what I don't understand. Hello? Aunt Williams! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Who, who is this? Why are you calling up and asking for... Who is this? I'm Forrest Nash! Please, listen! We have reason to believe that. Hey. It's you, isn't it? I always knew one day you would... And the one year I finally put it behind me. What are you talking about? For God's sake, you have to get out. Jeez! Ah! Okay, there is no like saving him then. Up. He's using There the is now. no oh, saving. My God. The call board. It... I... One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me... I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. Well, there's no way to save him. It, that's... It's giving me a thing of defeat, but there's no way to save him. Because I found him, but... I don't know. Peggy, what's happening in there? Peggy. I'm back. He blew up the gas station. Hold on, I'm curious. No, hold on, I'm checking the sheet. Is there actually a way to save him? Because I don't think there is. As far as I know, I don't believe. They all wish him in. Look at they all see. Trying to. Station. Lock all doors. I'm trying. Is there a way to save him? Forest. Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. The fire department is useless now, as you know. And, uh... The hospital's only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, you... You've got to say something on the radio. You have to tell the town. I'm putting up... Is there a way to save him? I'm actually curious. I was going for the full on save thing. Um, I just wait.
Tells me like in Back on air. It says it's Chuck Brody. So, okay, let me try Chuck Brody then. Because maybe maybe you can get two people in one. Yeah, because Chuck Brody. Okay, yeah, let's try it. Sure. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. I just want to give it a try. I want to try saving everybody. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Yeah, because he bought the gas station. Sense, but at the same time, I thought not so because. Oh, Chuck Brody, listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The whistling man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the whistling man's back. We found a list with your name on it and. Oh, God. It's today. I finally let myself forget. I quit talking and run. I I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. Ah! Jeez! It sounds like something blew up. He's using bombs now. I I is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello, Chuck. Chuck! Forrest, the whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah, damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man, I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Like a band aid.
Oh, cool. Yeah, the door's just plain up fucking open. Awesome. That's fucking great. Thanks. Son of a fucking bad. Hmm. A key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. I like that. Give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. That's fun. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. I fucking hate this shit. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That the time of death. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face, typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. This looks useful.
Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. Yo. opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, this has to be important. resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Back normal. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. What if it's uh, Don? I found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. 
George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurants, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The mm. written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved it after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra. Yeah. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah. What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's yeah. no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests? That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. I think. Well... Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I... I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This... This is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. Oh. I, um... I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... For playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know. Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. Orchestrated the cover up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? Uh, I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Oh, God, it transports me. Thank you, fucking Lord, dude. Oh my god, I was scared. Thank I'm not... God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to I... pad our airtime with. Peggy, you're I... working I... radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? This Did is you? Your job, Peggy. We gotta do it. <sighs> you're right. So, what's the plan now? I think... We should call Virginia back. All right. 
I'll get her on the line. Time to turn the music off. Oh, fuck that. I have all of them now, so I'm playing them all in one fucking night. So give me a fucking second. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Uh, give me a sec. Plunker, it's Goose. It's Goose. Goose, 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 Goose. Where are you? Get your ass here. The party has moved. Oh, cool. Where's it moved to? This old lady's house. Oh, she's pretty cool, though. She said we could raid her liquor cabinet if we stayed and protected her. Of course, we're not drinking anymore. We're staying sharp in case that whistling turd turns back up. The old lady might need our help. Of course, man. Of course. Hey, to be there. Get on with the old lady. You know, should check if it's cool for me to drop by. Oh, there's that goose respect we love. <laughs> I'll grab her now. Uh. Hello? Is this... Goose? <clears throat> hey, uh, Dr. Sullivan. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm... I'm glad you're still okay. Oh! Forrest! Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Oh, you're good. Uh, Sorry we need... That, but listen, hey, we need to talk. Big what time. About? We're calling because... We think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... Yeah. All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no. But, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this 
this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah. We need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but... Something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder Big time, she's yeah. We'll hopefully find out <laughs> soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's <clears> at the <throat> jazz studio. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you ask. That sounds bad. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Oh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he's just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who yeah. know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. I'm, I got... I'm super. I'm sorry. I'm I'm super like in it right now because I, I didn't expect the story to be this cool, but I actually really like it. Um, sure. Yeah, I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet, and everything would be okay. Who? Because he might come after her. Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. I know who it is. No? I don't wanna. Oh, come on! It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Boris. He's my Uncle Ronnie. 
His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you'd like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza! Start a jump! You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy, this is your fault! My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just Fucking hell. pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest. Sorry, sorry, that was, that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. I swear to God, if it's a- Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's- all I'm gonna say about that. Yep. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? I uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe yeah. I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park, but I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Shit. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he could muscle that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Listen, I can't get any... He's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system or I'm gonna die. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad. And it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Six digits. Sounds like that would be hard to remember. Yes. Very hard, especially on a night like this. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. How the fuck am I supposed right, to help folks. you? Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. 
while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. So where the fuck am I going? Okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? Nothing by way of key codes. I see. Any ideas, Peggy? Dawn says she's stuck outside the Woodside Apartments with the Whistling Man nearby. She's locked out because of some new security system. Yeah, the Starling 4000. Right, and we had the same security system delivered here. Clive was going to install it, so check the basement. I guess that's where Clive would have stuff like that. Thanks, Peggy. No problem. Don't take too long. Motherfucker. I'm generally getting tired of fucking with the basement. I'm oh, I'm generally getting tired of fucking with the fucking bait. So many locked doors, so few keys. Fucking with this. Okay, so it's not in here. I doubt it's over. I legit gotta go back in that room. I actually have to go back in. Thing. 
guess so, because I don't really need anything else for me to grab. Not up here, wise. Oh. Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The system's not even installed at Woodside. Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. I hate the creepy, ominous music. It was literally not gonna do it. Don't get me wrong, it makes you feel unsettled as fuck, but. Shit. Forest, find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starling 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. Yeah, because I'm thinking that girl's the... Through. What's his name? Shit. He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay. If you say so. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one. Whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. Uh huh, What's sure. The code to the gate? Code is one nine one five one nine. Thank you, Forrest. Son of a bitch. Ah! Is she? I know it. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Don't ever come back here again! Fuck yeah! Oh, I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him! That was the whistling man! The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. <coughs> you and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. Got it. Talk to you soon. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So, the whistling man is a woman? 
Uh, got a while. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Yeah, she seemed pretty normal. Maybe she wasn't right. I thought she was just. A... I, I knew she, was... she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Mm hmm. Why do you think she requested that song? Get me outside. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other and stay safe. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since oh. you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? We really appreciate, appreciate that. A hundred percent. Thank you, Murphy. Oh, thanks. So, uh, what do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh, I don't know, really. All right. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely yeah. nothing. Okay. What about the killer herself? Yeah. Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. The man I went toe to toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? No, sir. Tonight's the first time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here huh? three years ago, man. What do you want from oh. me? Oh. Hey man, no worries. no worries, just thank you for trying. Yeah. Uh, sorry I couldn't help y'all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators. Forrest, we have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy, I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all when the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has more they can tell us. Let's find out. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Easy, easy. Take a breath. Relax. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Pretty good clip. Him. Yeah, by Devil the Napkul. Also, when is Drew and Corey like gonna get title shots? Uh. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to Tough for me to talk away for the thing to happen. Alright, so, um. So, quick thing. Uh, the title shots are happening at the next big show. Um. Which is going to be at the end of this month, which is technically bankrupt. Um, we're going to be trying to do another show as well for MTW, Survival of the Fittest. 
uh, to where that's going to have MTW and PXC pretty much colliding. Um, even though technically they've already collided at this point, so that sort of defeats the purpose. But um, that, that's pretty much what's going to be going on with that. Uh, I'd rather get out by Devil than Abkul. <laughs> um, let's see. What is this? This game is a killer frequency. Uh, pretty much it's... The whole premise is that you're a radio host um, having to step in for 911 calls while a murderer is running loose trying to kill everybody in town. Um, you can play it two different ways. One way trying to save everybody. Uh, other way trying to kill everyone that's calling you. <laughs> so you can be the worst help or you can be the best help. Right now I'm trying to do a best help run. Um, because, I don't know, I, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, was it a woman? Casey, oh no, it's a woman. Is he talking to a woman? I don't know! They had God a damn it. We're all black. That's all I know! Please, yeah, it's, we need yeah. help here! I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left! The hell? They left him to bleed out! I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Mr. Kill, Mr. Apkel. Why didn't Keep you right now. Gotcha. There? That's so funny now. He needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the yeah. gas station. Yeah. You should get all the info you can. Alright, uh, what, what, what's your what's friend's your name? your friend's name, Casey? Jason. Jason Parker. Can you tell us where Jason was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach. They stabbed Ooh. him again. We'll be right oh. back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. And damn. Hello, St. Gotcha. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is, well, you know. I know, but... Brother please, Peter Parker? I have no idea. Maybe. Going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get what? there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. Yeah, and we legit we did, don't. He's bleeding out fast. Big time. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize okay. him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh... Damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. Fuck me, dude. Okay. Ah, uh, we don't have much choice. <laughs> we can handle it. Come on. Okay. From okay. The top. At the top. He's bleeding out. He's bleeding out. Then you need to get him comfortable. Not the bull. Stem the bleeding. Lay him the down. The Apply down. continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean okay. cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Pressure. Clean cloths. Clean cloths when and slowed. slowed. Maybe it. his maybe he's related to what's the name? He was stabbed, right? Maybe. Yeah, he Object was stabbed. Was stabbed with still in him. Don't take it out. Got it. Stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense though. Yeah. God, that was a lot of info, but I think we can handle this. Glad you I got think we got so this. Far, it's it's pretty basic. Okay. Wait, there's no more. Okay, shit. Fuck. Ah, uh, keep going. With you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If oh fuck me. Blood, he may enter shock. If he does, okay. act fast. If you apply a cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. Gotcha. If it's safe. Elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, That's as much as I can help. give you right well, now. Well, he's going to die. Stop Pretty much. <laughs> Gonna, here as hey, I don't know. I've been uh, I've, I've been pretty good with right, saving everybody today. I only one. fucked up because uh, I couldn't understand like this shit. Cause the, yeah, it goes into like a whole fucking like actual case solving thing, 
And it, it, I don't know. I, it's something I've been looking for. And uh, I'm actually, I think that's why I haven't fallen asleep yet, is because this is something I've been looking for to where I'm like, Hello? looking with a killer at this there? point. Uh, yes. We're on our own. Okay, so how's okay. Jason? How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I Good. need help. Okay. I've been putting pressure okay. on his stomach wound since you left. But okay. he's still bleeding. I don't okay. know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about yeah. the knife in his leg? It's you leave that. Hell. Should I pull it out? Uh, <laughs> don't touch no, the knife. Don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you uh, sure? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. Yeah. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah, it's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. You secure the knife. Uh, leave the knife alone. Okay, so what does secure the knife mean? Does that mean get the knife out? Or does that mean, uh... Well, I think they said secure the knife. So in other words, like... If I remember correctly, secure the knife. Right? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a thing real quick. <laughs> In case this kills the man. Um, leave the knife alone for now. Leave the knife alone. All right. I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Uh, now is the best time, Peggy. Can it wait? Forrest, it's kind of important. All right. Give me a second. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. Oh, wait. Jason, please be okay. Oh, God. What's, what's going on, Peggy? What? We fucked up, didn't we? What's oh, up, I... Peggy? We can't oh. stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Oh. We'll have to drive him. Any suggestions? Somebody nearby? Uh, any, any suggestions? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen yeah. missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You oh, cool. Me, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey yeah. said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Yeah. They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably. But I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I is going down. Disc is. Anyway, Nobody can be Reggie decided that and... the future is floppy. <laughs> Maybe and I don't started know. phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. Cool. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. I just have to look around. Good. Got it. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom.
Master of unlocking. Lock all doors. Oh, okay. Locked tight. Liars. This is certified the original sky. Okay, that's red. Yeah. The only thing I'm able to read would be 19. No, it can't be 19. Why are you reading this? Stop stealing my post. <laughs> Looks like I need a four digit code. Whatever. And very important bit. Very important. Ask Genie where those tapes are, it's been weak. Copy does. Could this be it? Killer who kills with the cutter, terrifying, or any. Every guy may be right him into the final girl's boyfriend protagonist is college student. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful. Six place, very important date for the town. Great goose gathering event with large number of goose. Need to kill off Megan's. Highly important. Could it be the. It can't be 19. Seven, can it? That'd be dumb. No way. Not so. Like, there's no way. That'd be so fucking stupid if it would. Reggie's birthday. One night. So he pro oh gotcha. So he Oh Damn. He doesn't love his son. Uh zero nine. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries. We still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. I put it... Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Very important date. The only one to use. As a date. Or not.
That's not working. Must be something else. Bitch ass, you're still up, don't you go to work in the morning. Uh, not in the morning, but I go in the other I invited you to a party hours ago. I told both of y'all I was going to be doing this shit. <laughs> um, God, I'm trying to figure out the actual date to this thing now. Uh, I'm more surprised people are up right now. <laughs> Bitch document, I don't ask forever. Uh, what's, what's, the, what's the number thing for Axe? I actually don't remember. That's my ass right now. My ass is hurting. I don't know what axe like number wise. It's one of these. It's either 1982 or it's 082. Uh, look at that. Nope. That's what not the working. fuck is it else. then? God damn it. Two, nope, that's not working. God damn that's it! What else. the fuck is it? I don't know what the hell else. Okay. I really don't. Well, I to search that. Bobby disc had anything on it? Oh, no. Could this be it? Partner with all these people. One. Takes place at 11:07. So it was either 11:07 or let's try 11:07. Try that. Nice. Okay, there it goes. Oh, son of a. Okay.
Hey, Peggy. I think Reggie's on to you and Karen. Maybe don't bring those little drink umbrellas into work for a while. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I can read the rest of this later. <laughs> Just fucking do it. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Bruce, what are you doing? We don't have time for this. Uh, I was like... I'm literally dying on the line, and you're more interested in you. You're right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. I really shouldn't have read both. We're in a hurry. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny, not gonna lie. Okay. What the fuck was that? Dude, I hate this fucking game. God. Oh, fuck, this gets shit out of me. I genuinely scared the shit out of me. Oh my god. Was it this thing? It might have been this thing. Hold on. Oh, fuck, dude. That scared the little fuck out of me. Yeah. Okay. Three people said it was crazy. We only have Bradley and Barbara. Stuff. Okay, so Brad and Barber are off the table. Aaron has really stepped up. Okay, hey, I'm starting to suspect that these. I think she said Karen and her skipped it, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, like These are the last two of them. Oh my god, okay. Uh, refused to engage with first aid training during the course. I know he was medic but it was patient policy to send everybody okay so he's an actual medic because he's a war medic much better equipment at his home and now uh, oh okay so john might be at uh 14 nancy drive oh i think they on the thing too if i remember correctly so he might be the perfect option there I think if I remember correctly, they're on Nancy. Haven Street, uh, got another must. Okay, yeah, I think we're good. Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Oh Casey, fuck. I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Okay. Um. Yeah, he's going into shock. Going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's wound. Oh, no. Elevate his leg, because that'll help Casey, it. I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. 
Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap them in some blankets. Just give me a second. All right. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay. Okay? Call John Hedges. Call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah. yeah. And according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. Uh, this is a medical emergency. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or... Never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Extent of his injuries. From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is damn. understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? How is he now? now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. John Hedges. I'm here about Jason. Please let me in. I like the good. With that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. I'm gonna get attacked. I feel like I'm gonna. Ah, <sighs> how are you doing? All right. Uh, just stab a twilight one. Play that shit. All right. You're gonna love this next track. It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you wanna go. <sighs>
I already found everything, so I guess I'm already like. I guess I'm technically already just set to just go. Okay. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. All right. How you doing? Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Oh, hey, how, how's it going? Good to hear good from, from you. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everybody, Maybe. let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh, what's up? Did you, you see or hear anything during the attack earlier? Not exactly. You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Oh. Tell me about him. What was George like? I didn't know him for long, man. Sad to say. We had our first team party on the night he drowned. Oh. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love. His girl? I could see it, you know? What was her name? What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? Yeah. We were just having a good time, and then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Oh. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. Big time. Got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Maxie to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh. Night, Ricky. That's actually pretty cool. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Coming up for your listening pleasure, it's Caged Tiger with their single, One Last Goodbye. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Oh, God. Busy night, huh? 
Finally! Yes, it's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. The help is on its way. Stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think yeah. the wrestling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. It's the whistling yes, woman. Hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. What do you need? Count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Oh, wow. Well, I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Boris Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Hope you're right. right. The sooner this is over, the better. I am right. Trust me. Anyway, we should get you back on air. Taking callers is the only way to see this through. When you're ready, shut the music off. Bringing you back live now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say things are looking up. It's almost over, but for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, oh, nice. is, is, is yeah. going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized nice. and resting in a bed. We're prepared cool. to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there? Yes, the whistling man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the whistling man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean... He was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told I'll watch her. George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in 
Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. What, what happened? happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man, pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone, started an almighty panic, those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? How do we get it back on? I don't, um, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. I am so fucking dead. He's here. Direction. Jeez. Here. Fucking basement. Huh. Far back corner. Why is this station so big? That, that must be it. Are you? Boom! We've got power. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Oh, Peggy's f***ing dead.
Peggy, where'd you go? Oh shit! No way. This can't be happening. A, a call. Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. All right. Let's. I'm happy to hear that. Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Well, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome oh, okay, it wasn't. Here, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But he made me crawl out of his coffin with all the money in the world. Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Your son? You mean you... Wait, did, did he? Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. Oh. There were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. I don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Lucky my sweet Ooh. boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Damn. Did you say Barrel? Then are you? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George is old girl. Oh, well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. What the? Quiet, Teddy. I'd be quiet if I were you, Teddy. But I. I'd listen to Forrest. Everyone's mm -hmm. gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Okay, right, I'll, do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago, and that's why I want you to interview us. If you say so, I'm not really in a position to argue. I'm happy we have your cooperation. Do a yeah. good job, and hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <sighs> I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Do you want to die, Teddy? Because if you don't, start talking. Uh, oh. What the hell? 
God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He you, going, you, you, you are going Cousins off topic. Came. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So I helped him keep himself together. You, you were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed, and the whistling man, <laughs> screaming, and George and I, and Ricky, we got left behind, but Ricky was in on it too, I know he was, he and Teddy were as close as anybody, Teddy must have told him the plan. Yeah, because I, I got to make him talk. So did you did ask you Ricky? Ask Ricky, if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... Well... about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Marie, I'm gonna be honest with you. Hit, Hit the fucker. Again, Marie. God damn it. You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. Uh -huh. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the whistling man grabs me, I scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I can stall for time here. How did you feel in that moment? I felt like nothing was real. I felt small. Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the whistling man? It was Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up. At the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy. What happened next? Nothing. It was just Teddy. George 
fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, goddammit! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains... He would have realized. Ugh, you bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what? But if it's I not true. Why cover it up? Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. Answer the question. question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father my, did with his me. business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking, that he just got himself into trouble, and... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. <sighs> we'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ. Forrest, you idiot. We're in the gym. No. He said, well, they said they're winning throw. I'm over here pitching basketball. Sorry. For all it's worth, 
Virginia didn't have much of a choice. He scared the shit out of me when he started getting closer. Treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her. I do like their outfit though. Their outfit's pretty cool. And her own. Even, even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no, that coward killed the story. Okay. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Never started. I shouldn't have pushed my door to open. Should have been punished. It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. When right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters. Yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So, Marie, where? Peggy. Teddy? You've got to help me. I. Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. Peggy, it's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god, I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, what, what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier... While you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. You remember? Well, yeah. It was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me? Oh. She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. I really like your outfit, actually. I, I, I actually really like your outfit. I might actually dress up like this for Halloween. to do this someone has to pay for what they did Murray please mom and dad are gone Peggy besides you forgot me just like the rest you forgot is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, Em. I... Well, I... How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. Help 
be okay. Oh, God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. Oh, two sisters. Peggy Weaver survives the whistling man. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm going to head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. And it's been a scream. Damn, dude. Oh, is there more? They've all wishing man targets. Epilogue and credits. My that's cool. I like that. Everybody I saved, oh wow. Where's Peggy? Oh, she is, she's over there. Wait, is it both the mom and her son? I don't get it copyrighted because the song, because like there's no way for me to take that down. Wait, maybe. Oh no, wait. Settings. Fuck that work. Oh. Oh, fuck it. I uh, fuck this shit. I just want to hear the damn thing. Oh shit.
I, I do want to press the home button, but at the same time, I do. That's cool, though. Yeah, so you can save everybody right here. This is actually a really cool game. Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is actually a really, really fucking cool game. It's exactly what I was looking for, which was like actually like a. Oh, that was it. Oh wow. That's actually really cool. Uh, real quick, I want to see the achievement. Oh wow, we almost got all of them too. So, nobody survives the Whistling Man, so you can go in and kill them all. Secret one. Play all radio ads during the course of the campaign. Finish the game in under four hours with all callers surviving. In under four hours? Oh dude, I could have fucking done that. I just missed the fucking deadline by one hour. Oh dude, that sucks. Damn. I wonder what that one was. Damn, so almost full on completed the game. That's pretty cool. Nobody survives the whistle, man. <laughs> I would play it just to kill everybody, honestly. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty cool, though. Uh, I enjoyed this. I stayed up way too goddamn late for this, though. <laughs> Um, I do understand that the video probably uh, got better later in the evening because I think my nephew got off. Um, I do apologize about that. I'm going to go to bed now because holy fuck. <laughs> uh, shit, though. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you guys fucking did, I don't know who fucking did. Way. Uh, I understand this is a long ass thing. I didn't expect it to take as long as it did, but uh, hell. I had a fun ass time. Uh, peace out. Take care. You guys have a great night. This has been Stockle Hunter plays Killer Frequency all in one fucking go. Um, I'm probably going to delete the live stream and upload the actual recording. Just because it will be full on clear for you guys. There won't be no problems or anything like that. So as a heads up, just going to do that for you guys because I feel like you guys deserve that. So with that said, peace out. Take care. You guys have a great night. See you guys next time. Uh, hopefully for another game because honestly, if they do make a part two to this, I would be fucking down to play it. I think that'd be so much fucking fun. Because this is exactly what I wanted, which was literally doing like a murder investigation thing, but also trying to help people survive murders as well, which was pretty fucking cool. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens in it. Like 100% excited to see what happens. Um, because if anything, I might do I might do a kill everybody around. <laughs> Just purposely kill everybody. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think this was actually a really cool fucking game. I would like to see what other games these guys got. By the way, uh, also want to thank this, uh, this episode was only made possible because of D-Mob. D-Mob, uh, did a payment thing with me because I've been helping out with MTW. That, I was able to get the game because it was on sale. I've been really dying, really been dying to play this game. And uh, I'm glad I did all in one go because I knew if I stopped at any point, I was probably never going to touch it again. But in all honesty, I'm glad I played it all in one go. I think this was the most fun I ever had. Uh, like murder mystery solving. And yeah. Uh, with that said though, uh, peace out. Take care. You guys have a great night. And uh, we'll see you guys next time for something else with PXT. Or uh, with maybe another playthrough series. I don't know. But yeah. Peace out. Take care. You guys have a great night.